Welcome to Robin Sean's Movie Club. Welcome to Robin Sean's Movie Talk. Welcome to Robin Sean's Movie Talk. <laughs> well, that was weird. Who are those people? I don't know. But uh, it is Robin Sean's Movie Talk. I guess that's what we're calling it right now. Movie Talk. That's so generic. I movie wish Slap. Maybe if you have something better, we could yeah. call it. Besides movie talk. I feel like it's that uh, thing, that skit from, uh, what was that? You dropped my double stack. Give me my double stack. It's leaking. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> what was that, that uh, SNL skit um, on Saturday Night Live with uh, Mike Myers? Wayne's World? No. <laughs> the one where he was beclept. Um... The one where he's German and like really no, creepy. No, no, that was he was a Jewish I, woman and he was beclept. No, that's um, that was Dana Carvey, not Mike Myers. No, it was Mike Myers and he was beclept. Anyway. I okay, okay. I think I know what you're talking about. They had Madonna on at one point. What's that buzzing noise? Your computer. Oh. All right. So yeah, we're eating our double stacks because we just came from a movie. Well, not related to Double Stacks at all, but Cedar Rapids. Cedar Rapids, starring Ed Helms. John C. Riley. John C. Riley. Right. <laughs> oh, you're eating, so I figured I needed to enunciate. <laughs> and Hish. And who? <laughs> <laughs> yes, as he said, and Hish. And um, um, a bunch of other little people. Little cameos, like who we got here. Uh, Rob Corddry. Um, From Hot Tub Time Machine. Yeah, the bald one. Yeah, the bald one. Um, Maybe Funke. Maybe Funke, that's her character name, the actual actress's name. Alia Shawcat. Alia Shawcat. I think that's how you say it. From the show Arrested Development. <coughs> so overall, the plot to this. And more assorted people at the show. It's about a, a small town insurance agent played by Ed Helms. Uh, goes to a convention and he must basically win the award uh, at this uh, ASMI a shoot yeah. insurance god rally thing so that his company can keep everybody employed. Yeah. And there he meets John C. Riley, who plays a wild card insurance salesman. It feels more like an indie. It didn't feel totally mainstream. No, I mean, it is an indie. It was done by the... I'm pretty sure it's done by the guy that Youth in Revolt, which is another movie that got wide distributed and yet felt very much like an indie. Mr. Bacon. That's a lot of bacon. <laughs> I'll put that bacon back in there. If you haven't eaten a double stack at Burger King, you're missing out. It is really good. At least we just reviewed these. <laughs> <It's a favorite laughs> place. I have reviewed a double stack, I think, before. Really? Yeah. Delicious. Delicious. So, overall, I think it was funny, but it wasn't non stop funny. <laughs> it wasn't moments. indie quirky funny, though, either. It was kind of mainstream funny. I just think the, the laughs were too few and far between. It really picked up in the last, like, half an hour, I thought. Mm -hmm. Comedy wise, it just gets crazy, and I and like some of the that. transitional parts in the film very out of nowhere just for comedy's sake, like the scavenger hunt. But, but overall, that, I would that recommend led to your favorite line. Yes. <laughs> overall, I would say go see it if it comes near you. Oh yeah, but if you don't see it in theaters, no biggie. Wait until wait until TV. Definitely comes. worth seeing though. I mean, so that's the theater movie we saw. I, when does this come out? I don't know. It's already out in some cities. Because we Baltimore. saw it at a screener because yeah, it is limited. It's not release. out in Baltimore yet. So. Baltimore. Baltimore. So, moving on. What we watched this week in movies. Because it has been about a week since we last talked to you guys. I think the only one that we uh, lap over on is uh, Tucker and Dale vs. Evil. Tucker and Dale vs. Evil. Yes. So Directed by, you don't know, starring Alan Tudyk. I'm pronouncing that right. And, um, I don't know the other guy's name. He's really funny. Though. What's Alan Tudyk from? Uh, Death at a Funeral, the original, and, uh... Yeah, he's the guy who does the acid. Yeah. yeah. He's been in a bunch of movies. And then the other guy was in, um, he was in Sons of Tucson. Mm-hmm. And, uh... The show. The show Reaper. And Which, actually, I have Reaper in my queue on Netflix. Is it on? Mm-hmm. Streaming? Yes, it is. Really? So I was thinking about giving it a shot. Uh, but just a, a quick overview of Tucker and Dale vs. Evil. It's really, it's kind of a funny concept. It's about a bunch of college students who go, you know, on a you know weekend crazy getaway and run into some hillbillies. But it's shown from the other perspective, the hillbilly side, 
who aren't really that much hillbillies. They're just two guys who go out into the country because they yeah. buy like a summer place and they want to fix it up. And just it shows the hilarity of how much... It's a horror movie through the perspective of the so-called bad guys, but they're not really doing anything. They're not bad guys. They're yeah. just they're stupidly, accidentally doing things to make them look like yeah. crazy hillbilly killers. <coughs> and then the kids unwittingly, and this is in the trailer if you guys look it up online, so, are to start to kill themselves off in gruesome ways by accident, but yeah. that makes the hillbillies look guilty. So it's 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 very it's very humorous, yeah. um, to say the least. I think it's going to be really good when it comes out, mm -hmm. and it's going to be worth watching. And uh, I don't know if it'll come to theaters, but definitely if it comes to DVD, check it out. Definitely, definitely. It was a good one. Now I watched an old school movie this past week. I watched Congo. This of course is what from the nineties, I believe. Yeah. Uh, the opening. It has a lot of people in it. Uh, Bruce Campbell. Um, Tim Curry, uh, the, I don't know the actor's name, but he plays Adebisi on the uh, HBO series uh, Oz. Um, Dr. Oh, Carl, Sean, Carl Weathers. Dr. Sean McNamara. John, Dr. Sean McNamara from Nip Tuck is actually the main character, yet he's not credited on the uh, the box, the, like the poster art. That's funny. Even though he's one of the main three that's on there. Now, I watched this movie because I thought it was hysterical when I was a kid. I thought it was great. Watching it now, it's a really bad movie. It's about like a lost city of diamonds that is run overrun by uh, killer apes or gorillas. And Tim Curry is a, a Romanian, uh, He's Romanian philanthropist. Yeah, that is uh, looking for the lost city of Zinj, as he puts it. <laughs> when they first see it, it's like this statue with two golden eyes. And they're like, what is that? And he's like, the lost city of Zinj. I have been searching all my life. <laughs> it's a horrible accent, too. But, um... And monkeys kill people. Monkeys. It's it's ridiculous. There's there's parts where heat-seeking missiles are coming after a plane, and they shoot them out of the sky uh, with, um... What do you call them? Flare guns. This sounds too good to be true. It's bad. It's really bad, and it's long. It's like... It feels forever long. It feels like it's two hours long, I think. It can't so, be that long. It's, it's on Netflix streaming. If you get the urge to watch... a classic from the early 90s <laughs> watch Congo but it's pretty ridiculous yes talking monkeys and all Congo. what else did you watch this week I I've watched TV shows TV shows I watched uh, I've been watching Chuck I'm not a big fan of Chuck you, you didn't like the, what you saw when you originally watched I watched it. a bunch of Chuck how much did you watch? With you, I watched like two episodes. Chuck. No, you didn't. You like saw little bits and pieces. I watched at least one episode and it was boring. Maybe. And when it first came on, I watched it and it was boring. Well, I like the show. I don't give up about Chuck. Up Chuck. Up Chuck. Shazam! Ah. Oh, damn it. <laughs> but That yeah. didn't come from my mouth. That's cheese off this um, delicious burger. I don't know. I enjoy the show. So, if you like comedy... And action, and romance, and spies, and we shit. differ here. The music in the background sounds like a soap opera. They do overuse the same music. It's not the greatest show ever, but it is very entertaining. After coming off some very serious dramas like you know Breaking Bad and Mad Men and mm -hmm. Sons of Anarchy, it was nice to watch something I could just enjoy. True. Now I, uh, speaking of death at a funeral. Yeah. The British one, the original one. That's a good one. I actually watched this week uh, Death at a Funeral, the uh, the remake, the Chris Rock. Um, With the same midget. Chris Rock, Danny Glover, uh, Tracy Morgan. Uh, Morgan um, and assorted black folks. <laughs> it's, it's, it's basically an all black cast, I think, except for uh, Luke, the, Wilson. Luke Wilson and um, James Marston. James Marston, he's the one that plays the guy who gets on the drugs in this one. And Peter Dinklage. Who's Peter Dinklage in it? The little man. Oh, the midget. It's the same the midget. The midget. Uh, same midget from the original. That's got to be weird. Like, hey, come back and do this uh, movie that you already did. Yeah. The exact the same, same way, uh, just with an all black cast. <laughs> Nothing, not, like the movie, I mean, I love the, the original British film, and basically, I mean, in... If you hadn't seen the original... In transition, the movie's still great, uh, but this movie didn't do anything 
new besides add a couple of black jokes to it. And I don't say black jokes in a, in a I mean, it, you know, it's black humor. Right. Um, they, they make light of that. And basically, that's... It's like Tyler Perry movies. That's basically... Well, no, no, it's a little bit better than Tyler Perry movies. No, I just mean in the, like, tonal, at least. Or not, like, tonal. tonal? Like, not tonal sense, but just, like, its core audience. Yeah, yeah, basically, that's what they wanted to do. They yeah. wanted to open it up to a wider audience. And for some reason... You know, they figured the best route for that would be Chris Rock, Tracy Morgan, and um, Martin Lawrence. I forgot to mention Martin yeah, Lawrence. Yeah, Martin Lawrence. Lawrence. Too. It is funny. I do recommend it. It's on um, Netflix streaming as well. So if you haven't seen the original, you can watch it. But just remember, the original's out there. And I think the original is a British comedy done by the same people that did In the Loop, isn't it? Or uh, um, I feel like they've done something else pretty popular British-wise. Probably. But it's that, that it's type funny. of humor is really funny. Have you seen In the Loop? No. Very You've funny. recommended it, I think, on the yes. past show. Uh, you haven't watched a lot this week, so I watched a yeah. bunch. Uh, of course, I watched Eternal Sunshine and Spotless Mind the night before um, Valentine's Day, because that's my like tradition, because the movie actually takes place on the day before Valentine's Day. Uh, I don't have to say a whole lot about that movie. Michelle Gondry, Jim Carrey, Kate Winslet, um, I Mike, Mark Memento. Ruffalo, Kirsten Dunst, and Tom Wilkinson. Excellent movie. Check it out if you haven't already. Everybody that has watched this show or past review shows of mine knows that that's my favorite movie. It of is. All time. It's a, it is a really good movie. It looks mm -hmm. really quite good on uh, the Blu ray. I did pick up the Blu ray copy yes. uh, with the special edition. Actually, I picked it up. You did. You did. Uh, I paid I brought for it. it to you. I paid for it, though, so I count that as picking it up. Okay. So. I rewatched uh, Memento. If you haven't seen that, I was something you should watch it. Guy Pierce, directed by uh, Christopher Nolan. Chris Nolan, he wrote it, mm -hmm. based off Jonathan Nolan's short story. That was his second film, correct? First film was Following. Yeah. Very good movie. Yes. Very good movie. <laughs> I also watched. Uh, Netflix has been a, a dear friend of mine lately. I love the streaming. Uh, they're getting a little bit more variety. Not as much new, but I've been checking out a lot of older films. Uh, F is for fake is a documentary done, uh, it was like the last film, I think, done by Orson Welles. Mm. And it is a documentary about uh, art? basically fakes, a, a art forger that is now living in like... Uh, his name is Fakes? No. <laughs> <laughs> I forget his name. It, honestly, I really wanted to like this documentary, and I know that critically when it came out, I think late 80s is when it might have came out, uh, it's all over the place. It's very incongruent. Uh, Orson Welles' narration and appearances in it are what make it worth at least checking out. But overall, the tone and like the amount of like information that you can absorb from a documentary really needs to be laid out nicely for you, or at least like narratively. And it was all over the place. It was like an experimental you know, documentary. And I know it's Criterion Collection and all, and it's yeah. renowned and all. But when it first came out, it wasn't highly acclaimed, and I didn't really care for it either. Like I said, other than watching Orson Welles for the little bits that he was, I can fat just with a beard doing magic to him tricks. Talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch, watch the Transformers movie, where he plays Omicron. <laughs> and when they interviewed him later, they were like, "So you're in the new trans?" He's like, "I play a toy that uh, wants to eat other toys." <laughs> and they're like, "What?" Because <laughs> he went like he didn't know what he was doing. Yeah, and then uh, History of the World, he narrated that. Mm -hmm. Tangled. We both saw Tangled. Ah, yeah, there Tangled. we go. Tangled. We watched Tangled. Tangled was good. It was good. I didn't expect a lot from it. It's the story with Rapunzel and all. It started like an old Disney movie for me, especially with those two like songs in oh, the beginning. Oh, I, I love the opening because it was like an old Disney yeah. movie. Yeah. Like the opening of like Sleeping Beauty or, or Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Very reminiscent of like growing well, up with Disney. Well, it is Disney, Disney, isn't it? Yeah, it is Disney. It's, it's just, just I, you know, I they almost, captured the old... like. I almost wish that they took Disney. Tangled and just hand drew it. As much yeah. as I liked the CG whatever... Hand drawn. Would hand drawn. Nice. It would have been amazing. Like the frog and the um, the, the princess, princess and, the, and the, frog. the frog. The frog and you. Yeah, whatever. With the, the, with the frog and the, you. Whatever. With the, yeah. with the trumpet playing. Oh yeah, you the frog. That? That's a really good film and too. And the alligator playing the trumpet. <laughs> are, you, are you done? <laughs> Maybe. Okay. <laughs> uh, I think that movie was uh, Tangled. Tangled was really good, but I think it would have, it, it, as good as it was, it would have been better. Ron Perlman. If, uh, yeah, Ron Perlman does a voice. And there's a horse sword fight with a frying pan and all. The horse is... There's a lot of really good... There's sidekicks There's a, there's a naked midget with a bow and arrow. Or he's wearing he's a He's wearing hard underwear. He's wearing a diaper. 
basically this felt like a kind of a Shrek ripoff only because it was done that same way. And like I said, my only complaint is that it was done that way. The story and the, the writing and the and everything yeah, was really it was, good. It was a nice twist on the Rapunzel mm -hmm. story, yeah. I didn't think you could make a, a Rapunzel story out of more than what that little story was. But yeah. they did. And it was very entertaining, even as a 25-year-old and the younger viewers. <laughs> and you point to me. Well, you are younger. I'm 20. Yeah, younger. Also, <laughs> I watched... Yeah. Um, Oh, there's only other one one I have on my list that I watched, Rabbit Hole. Oh yeah. Which is the um nominated this year, right? It actually isn't nominated for anything. No, but uh what's his name is nominated. Uh isn't Nicole Kidman nominated? Is she? I thought one of them was nominated. Well it's Nicole Kidman and She uh, might be Aaron I... Eckhart. Hold on, let me, you keep talking, I'm gonna try to think about this. It's uh it's basically a story about a couple, a married couple, that have lost their son, uh, who was four years old, um, eight months prior, and they're going through, you know, I guess the the expected um, life changes, you know, that come from that sort of event. They're going to uh, basically like meetings to try to cope with it, meet other people who have lost people that they loved. Um, they're dealing with, uh, you know, each 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 character is dealing with it in their own way. Uh, one wants to be surrounded by, you know, things that remind them of their, their past son, and the other one wants to kind of just not have pictures up because it upsets them too much. And being that their son, uh, this isn't a huge spoiler, but uh, was killed uh, he in, dies. in a car accident, and the, the kid that killed him in the car accident is a neighborhood kid. Uh, so they kind of, the there's this dynamic going on. It's a very sad movie. But it feels kind of like Revolutionary Road in in the sense where there's this couple that just can't get along. But overall, you know, the oh, performances okay. are really good. Are you bored with this? Because I'm trying to talk about Rabbit I haven't rabbit seen hole. it yet, and I want to, so I was zoning out of your review. Anyway, <laughs> it's good for the performances. I don't think it's... It's nothing you haven't seen before. I it's like very dull and drunk. Like I said, I really compare it to... Watch it and tell me it's not like a Revolutionary Road in some sense. I really like that I mean, movie, it doesn't though. take place in the 60s or whatever. But are you, are you saying you like liked it on par with Revolutionary Road? No, 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 no. I'm saying the tone. The average okay. tone and the conflict that happens between the two main characters reminds me of like Revolutionary Road. Because I really liked Revolutionary Road. We ran out of tape. When? I don't know. It's still recording. The lights on. Yeah, but we ran out of tape. Did we, in case we ran out of tape, or didn't, we'll see you next week. I Those think we ran out of tape. Weird ending. See ya.